All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Justin Pelham, and I'm the Communication Specialist with the Muskegon Lakeshore Chamber of Commerce. And I'd like to welcome you to our virtual roundtable this morning, where, we'll, where we will be talking about tourism and hospitality with our guest, Bob Lukens from Visit Muskegon. Um, I'd like to start off um, by thanking our sponsor, Invigor. Um, and over to Andy from Invigor, where he'll give us a, Andy, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. My name is Andy Major. I run Invigor with my wife, Amanda. We have been servicing um, West Michigan-based businesses for the last 10 years. We are a uh, creative agency and we strive to be a one-stop shop for our, all of our clients. Um, we offer everything from custom website design and development, identity and branding, uh, print and digital marketing, um, and custom solutions. Um, <clears throat> basically anything and everything for your marketing needs. Um, a large number of our clients are tourism based. And during this unprecedented time, we have been working closely with them to come up with creative solutions in order to meet their marketing needs. Um, some examples are just incorporating e-commerce platforms into existing websites, um, incorporating curbside options um, for a lot of different, uh, different level of, of services and uh, just helping with messaging, um, kind of reevaluating what their message is and helping them move forward from there. Um, we just want to let everyone know we're here to help if you ever need anything. So that's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, and now before I turn it over to Bob, just a little housekeeping. Um, I ask that everybody keep their mics muted during the presentation. Presentation will last 10 to 15 minutes. Um, then we'll move to a question and answer segment. If you have a question that you'd like to ask, um, please go down to manage participants if you're on a computer. A sidebar will open up where you can click raise your hand. That'll signal, signal to me that you have a question and I'll just call on you to ask your question. Or you can mute yourself or raise your hand if you're on a cell phone and that'll also give me the same signal. And then I will just uh, call on you or you can put your question in chat and then I can read it to Bob. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob Lukens from Visit Muskegon. Good morning, Bob. Bob there. To talk about tourism and hospitality, I want to also introduce my colleague, Amy Van Loon from the White Lake Area Chamber and CVB. So Amy's on here too. So at, when it comes to question and answer period between the both of us, we should be able to answer some of your questions. So right now, as you all know, for the past seven weeks or so, we've all been gathering information and planning for when um, we can reopen here. Uh, right now, it's looking like the stay-at-home order will expire on the 15th, uh, but there is a chance, a very good chance, that the governor could extend that to the end of the month. Um, that makes it difficult for a lot of the businesses out there, but I know that people are planning and gathering information now. Um, we're, we're really all bombarded by information and webinars, so it's hard to sort some of it out. But we know that you are trying to contact your partners and clients, and from the tourism perspective, we're trying to contact not only our partners, but potential travelers who are still coming to our websites and, and engaging with us on social media. So in some instances, travelers will be making um, some spur of the moment travel decisions. When, when things open back up, uh, travelers will, from the Grand Rapids area, for instance, could say, well, let's go to the lakeshore and spend the day there. So uh, we, we have to be prepared and have information readily available for our area you know, information on the hotels, attractions, restaurants, for these people that may be making these spur of the moment decisions to come here when things open back up. Um, again, uncertainty is the biggest factor. Everyone talks about the uncertainty of it all and um, tourism and hospitality is in the same boat. Uh, but some things are consistent 
nationally. And um, what those are is safety and um, sanitation, distancing protocols. Uh, you know, everyone, when they do come back, wants to go to a place that is safe and that is clean and that they will feel comfortable. So um, that's the message, one of the messages we're trying to get out to our partners that, you know, you have to have a good safety plan and um, be able to tell people about that safety plan and how you're um, keeping your business clean and sanitized. Um, so as we move forward, information and messaging will be the key. Uh, we want potential visitors to know that we're here for them and we're open. We operate clean and safe facilities and that safety is our top concern. Our attractions, accommodations, and restaurants have plans in place for visitors and how to deal with them and some of their questions and movement through their businesses and around the attractions. And then we have wide open spaces um, with large beaches and plenty of room to move around. And I think that's going to be our um, key selling point or one of our key selling points is that the outdoors and the beaches here in Muskegon County are big. I mean, some of our comp competitors, you know, I, I don't really like to say that word because we're all in this business together. But some of our competitors have lost their beaches due to the high water levels. And here in Muskegon County, we're very fortunate to have beaches up and down the lake shore um, that are still there. So that's a real plus. Uh, but you know, we have to be realistic about this. Uh, the jobs numbers came out today and um, it looks like 33 million people are without work at this point and collecting unemployment. So it's gonna be a tough road back. Um, but I'm going to try to zip through these slides. Uh, looks like we're five minutes in here, so I got another five or ten minutes to talk about the slides, so we'll get going on that. Next slide, please. Hello? Can you see the next slide? No, I can't. <laughs> um, well, let me just go over what we'll cover. It, today, I'd like to talk about tourism and hospitality industries. There it is. Nationally, regionally, and locally. Uh, our Visit Muskegon's outreach efforts to the local industry. Our plan for the local tourism and industry, hospitality industry reset. The local festival and event scene and uh, in the short term and what it'll look like this summer. And then the future of hospitality and tourism. So I'm gonna go through that real quick and then we'll open it up to questions. The industry nationally, you can probably see the slide up on your screen. Um, hospitality and tourism are among the hardest hit industries. I've heard um, numbers and I can't confirm these, but I've heard numbers that between 15 and 20 million of the people that are unemployed work in some type of service industry that's related to hospitality and tourism. Now, I'm not sure about that number and I'll have to look more closely at that but that's a huge number. Um, so the DMOs or the CVBs across the country are reaching out to their partners, providing them resources, and really maintaining contact with their clients, especially in the meetings and conventions arena. So, you know, we, we want to keep those discussions going and planning for the future because we will eventually come back. Um, CVBs across America are, are really dealing with staff reductions. Um, and here in Michigan, that's happening too. You know, um, staffs are really severely reduced during this time. And um, overall, nationally, people are, are CBBs and the industry is planning for a fairly slow recovery. It's not gonna come back tomorrow because people will be leery of, of um, going into close quarters with others, you know, for some time. So changes will be made but uh, the recovery won't be overnight. Uh, meetings and conventions are looking out at 2022 and many large conferences for the rest of this year and in 2021 are being written off or postponed to 22. Um, I was just looking at the Destinations International website and that's the um, International CVB Association and their annual conference, which typically draws between 1,500 and 2,000 attendees, um, is online and virtual in August this year. And, uh, you know, it's usually a really big event, and they're just moving it online. 
So let's look at um, tourism statewide. Um, I've been in several webinars and discussions with Dave Lorenz, um, who lives here in Muskegon County. Uh, he's the state travel director, and Pure Michigan funding will be minimal um, to almost non-existent, unfortunately. Um, we're hoping for some level of funding from the state, and that will be important to keep the programs going. Um, again, CDB statewide are reducing staffs and um, stopping their marketing. Most of them do have social media presence to some extent, so that's uh, encouraging. Initial travel will definitely be less than 200 miles. Uh, we won't be seeing a lot of the, a lot of the uh, out of state or international visitors that we typically see here in Muskegon County. We'll see a lot more localized day trippers. Uh, CVBs are looking at our visitor information center operations and what those will look like, how we'll deal with information requests, in-person information requests. So we're working on that plan along with the county for our visitor information center here in uh, the depot downtown. Uh, we're also looking at our guide production. Fortunately, our visitor guide came out early in the season before the COVID-19 hit, um, and we were able to get a lot of our um, a lot of our uh, guides out to distribution channels. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say about uh, 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 the industry here in the state is um, that MSAE is, that's the Michigan Society of Association Executives. They're working on a safe meetings in Michigan project that will, that's bringing together planners, um, hoteliers and CBB executives and others um, to analyze all facets of the meetings and conventions and um, develop guidelines, templates, sample floor plans, room setups, those sorts of things by May 30th. So we can begin that planning for larger events and uh, conferences, meetings, that sort of thing. Locally, the next slide, please. Locally, um, we're hearing again nationally though, that uh, driving, destination, driving destinations and beaches will be popular. So day trips, again, are going to be very important. And we're, Muskegon County is a great day trip destination for uh, people in Grand Rapids and some of those center state uh, communities that want to get to the beach. Uh, marketing will be fairly localized when we first come out of it. Um, and then we'll gradually get um, cast a wider net. Safe activities and local restaurants will be very popular. People are um, kind of backing away from the chains and supporting their local restaurants. Um, some of our restaurants locally are benefiting from catering for uh, uh, health, health workers, construction, those sorts of things. And Visit Muskegon has been maintaining a restaurant and carry out, a restaurant carry out and curbside uh, list. So we update that every day to make people aware locally about uh, the restaurants that are offering those services. And as they come online now, uh, more and more restaurants are starting to offer that service and come online again. Uh, some of our hotels are open and others will reopen soon. The Shoreline Inn is scheduled to reopen May 15th and the Delta about two weeks later. Um, so that's really encouraging our two uh, full service hotels downtown will be opening soon and um, we're really excited about that. The Lake House restaurant is set to open for carry out uh, on May 11th too. And um, we're seeing more restaurants opening up. So that's fantastic. Outdoor activities are really popular. Um, camping for our county campsites um, could begin May 16th or the 29th. Again, that depends on the governor's stay at home order but we're seeing lots and lots of activity at our county parks out at Mosquito Creek, the new mountain biking area and um, other areas, um, you know, other outdoor destinations. Uh, museums are working remotely and working with the school districts. So uh, they're providing programs for teachers and educators and folks that are home with their kids, um, which is really uh, important to keep the kids on that learning path. And then the convention center work is progressing uh, rapidly. Emily and I were talking before this and um, on Monday, from Monday to Wednesday, the change has been dramatic. So, you know, if you're out driving around, take a look at the convention center, it's moving along very quickly. 
Uh, out, outreach efforts by the CBB to the local industry were um, in constant communication with the hotels, attractions, and restaurants. Um, we're updating those restaurant pages. We have some resource pages on our website. We're sending convention center updates to the planners because they are very interested in the new convention center. You know, new is good. So they'll like that and we're sending them updates. Um, we're in discussions on a daily basis with uh, our meetings and conventions clients. And we're still getting some RFPs in for 2022 and beyond. So that's really encouraging. And the word, uh, you know, as far as conferences and meetings goes is postpone, don't cancel. Uh, and again, we're sending information out to all of our partners from a variety of different sources. Um, our plan for local tourism uh, and hospitality reset, I like the word reset better than recovery. Next slide, please. Um, we met yesterday with a group of 15 of our tourism leaders and other ATAC members, that's the Accommodations Tax Committee members, to discuss development of a plan. So we gathered comments from them and we're developing action items. And we're going to have a toolkit for the local industry that will have consistent messaging in it. They'll probably have some badges and logo type things that people can add to their marketing so that we're all uh, conveying that consistent message, consistent messaging. And uh, you know, if possible, we'll see if we can align those with our local hotels, those messages with our local hotels, attractions, and food and beverage. Um, and then social media, of course, we're trying to get information out to visitors and our clients through social media. So look for that plan if you're involved in the industry coming out within the next week or two. Uh, next slide. Um, before I go into the future, I just wanted to say our local festivals and events, um, some of our later season festival and events are still on the books as of today. Um, some of the even midsummer events have still or are still uh, on the books. So we're encouraged by that. Uh, but you know, we keep daily watch on the festivals to see if there are any changes. So there may be some changes coming up. But as of now, probably from about July 1st on, um, you know, we still have some festivals on the books. Uh, the cruise ships are going to be back July 1st. The Pearl Mist, our old friend, will be here on uh, July 1st. So we'll be ready for them unless things change. And again, it comes back to this uncertainty. Uh, just everyone's uncertain about things. Um, the future, I think it's really going to be important to convey to potential visitors and to the local audience um, that safety, you know, uh, safety and cleanliness in your business is your, your top priority and our top priority as a destination. Distancing will be important. You know, a lot of people aren't following that, but, you know, we're going to have to. It's going to be very important for people to feel comfortable when they're dining or uh, recreating here that, you know, someone's not in their space. So that's going to be important. And, um, you know, don't expect for overnight changes. It's going to be a slow return, but um, we're Muskegon, we're strong, and we can do it. Um, and with everyone's help, I know that our community will come back. We've done it before, and we'll do it again. So that's what I have. I kind of zipped through it fast. Um, I'm a few minutes late, but we're open for questions. If you have any, please feel free to let me know. All right, Thank Bob. Thank you for that. That was a great presentation from you and Visit Muskegon. Um, if anybody has a question, uh, please just click the raise your hand icon and I'll call on you so you could ask your question or type it into the chat bar and I'll ask it. All right. Somebody's got to have a question out there. All right, uh, Dave Alexander, go ahead. Am I always the one to have to ask the first question? <laughs> Bob, uh, on our call yesterday, we discussed, uh, and I think John Rooks brought it up, um, this um, uh, marketing plan that would include some sort of a catch, a slogan, a brand, a logo, that would be that reset. Um, yeah. You just want to describe that a little bit and how we all can use that as we use Watch Us Go? Yeah, what we're looking for are some um, 
action words that will basically, and images that will basically um, convey the fact that we're ready and we're ready for visitors and um, we want people to consider Muskegon. If um, we can all uh, jump on board to it to any, with any, or in any extent possible, you know, if we can use this logo or some of the verbiage um, in your marketing efforts so that we're kind of consistent moving forward, I think that'll give people uh, an idea that, you know, this community has it together and they are ready for us to visit. So let's give it a try. Um, yeah, I think consistency and messaging is going to be really important. And again, it, it, it comes back to that uh, safety and cleanliness factor. People are going to be, it's going to be a different world, you know, um, the way people interact with spaces and to make them feel comfortable, we're going to have to have really um, kind of stringent um, protocols in place so that people feel safe and comfortable and willing to spend their money. All right, um, any more questions? Um, feel free to type them in the chat, raise your hand. Oh, Cindy, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have a question, Bob. I know some of the museums can social distance better than others, but do you know if the museums have started working on how they would route people through um, with social distance? Yes, the museums are working on that. And um, what they're looking at is kind of individual guides to guide small groups of people through the museums. So they're um, talking to their staffs and developing plans to bring smaller groups in like family groups and very small, you know, maybe two to even five or seven people through the museums. And, you know, that can be a challenge, especially in our historical homes and such, because there are, you know, there's smaller spaces. They're not designed really for uh, for large groups. So bringing smaller groups through, uh, I think will be a lot easier for the museums and, um, it will give, it will give people that really personalized feel, I think, which, which many will appreciate. All right. Thanks, Bob. Um, we had a question come in. Um, it said you mentioned a decrease in funding for marketing, but also emphasized the need for marketing. What resources, what resources are available for that? Um, from the CVB's expect, uh, from the CVB, I guess, um, the CVB's, we're kind of tight too. So um, we're going to be focusing a, a lot of our marketing that already hasn't been paid for and placed um, on social media. So, um, you know, the resources for marketing are kind of um, up to the individual. Uh, you know, I would recommend social media marketing. Um, we're not very confident that people are going to be wanting to pick up brochures and other things that, uh, you know, you have to handle. So, uh, you know, creating a more ro robust uh, social media presence, I think for restaurants, for attractions will be really important as we move forward. Um, we all have funding challenges. So it's not like, uh, you know, you'll be alone or an island. Um, everybody's coming up with uh, new ways to really cut through the social and web clutter um, to make their message heard. So, you know, um, keep your eyes on social media and try to develop really strong campaigns through that. All right. Here's another question, Bob. Um, how are events finding ways to continue without large group settings um, like the Taste of Muskegon has done? Um, any other examples? Well, um, I think a lot of our festivals are looking more closely at virtual events. Uh, I've seen some of the runs and other um, marathons and such that are doing kind of uh, your own personal marathon. You know, you, um, you go out, you complete the marathon, and then you register your times and such um, on the websites and through some of their virtual um, outlets. So I think, uh, you know, more of those virtual type events will be happening on the, in the short term. Um, conferences are, are happening, as I mentioned earlier, the Destinations International Conference is happening online and they still have a full slate of, uh, of uh, guests for that and speakers for that. So, uh, you know, a lot of it will be virtual in the short term. 
and we'll just have to see how things roll out um, during the summertime and uh, you know if people are willing to meet and can meet um, in smaller groups uh, you know we'll probably see uh, smaller events with appropriate distancing taking place um, we've been talking about it as the staff here um, about what some of those events could potentially look like in the future um, in some of our wider, wider open spaces like Heritage Landing, for instance, or, um, you know, some of the downtown locations that Heckley Park, some other places, um, what those events will look like and how people can, um, you know, conduct events um, while still maintaining social distancing and, uh, you know, kind of cleanliness, I guess you could say. Okay, Bob, now I will... Uh turn it over to Carla, who has a question. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you kind of, hi, good morning, everybody. Morning. You kind of answered it in that last one, but my question was, even if the stay-at-home order is lifted, we don't have any inkling of what the gathering size, acceptable gathering size will be come the middle or end of summer, right? So even if right. they lift this ban, they might still say, okay, you can't have gatherings of more than 50. Right, right. You know, um, I just took a really brief look at Illinois' plan. And, um, you know, they're starting out with, um, uh, you know, they're beginning with groups of 10, then moving it to groups of 50 and so on. But, uh, yeah, we don't have any inkling. And the governor will um, probably um, set forth those rules or regulations um, as the stay-at-home order is lifted, um, but again, for for any type of events, I think uh, you know we're going to have to have well-marked areas that people can can move about um, in a wider basis. I mean, that's not the right word, but you know, distance properly. So that'll make it difficult. We'll need larger areas for um, for uh, you know events and festivals and even dining. You know, we're looking at dining and al, al fresco dining, people will want to dine outdoors because they'll probably just feel safer. So what can the restaurants do to extend their outdoor, outdoor uh, spaces? And I think, you know, that'll be a discussion that we'll have to have with the city and, uh, you know, some of the restaurants to see if there are ways we can maybe, you know, temporarily close a, a side street or something or an alley and, um, you know, open it up to, uh, some al fresco dining or a small type event. Problem is, is you announce an event and you'll have, you know, hundreds of people show up because everybody wants to get out. So it's going to be a real challenge, but uh, we'll have to work through it. Okay, thanks, Bob. We have just a, a time for a few more questions. I had a couple come in. Um, one from Roger. How can we collaborate together to increase the Take It Outdoors campaign? Well, um, you know, we're working on the plan here. We'll for sure share it with, um, with all of our partners and the chamber, uh, the, both chambers, the chamber up north and uh, the White Lake Area Chamber and the Muskegon Chamber um, to convey that message that the outdoors uh, are the place to be and Muskegon County has lots of wide open spaces. So, uh, you know, I think we'll be collaborating um, more closely on some of that messaging and uh, you know, any kind of ideas that you have, feel free to send them on to me, email them to our staff um, and I'm sure the chamber staff too, um, because we all need to work on this together and, and come back together uh, to make Muskegon County a, a, a good destination for people to visit um, as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. Okay. Um, our last question will come from Rachel. Um, Rachel, go ahead. Hi, Bob. Hi, um, Rachel. I have a question. Maybe you can have some perspective from a county standpoint as somebody who was supposed to get married this weekend. Is, you know, a lot of couples I'm seeing online are really considering, like, elopements this year to postpone the big celebration. Like, do you know, if, if, is the county being cooperative and some of those like legal paperwork application efforts. I'm just and then wondering too, like, is there a way to promote, 
you know, isolated, beautiful spots still in Muskegon that these couples could still support, you know, our photographers, florists, and kind of promote, like, this is a great place to elope um, amid kind of like the disruption from all these people that would have had all these families coming to Muskegon just for their celebration, just something to think about, I guess. Yeah, it's a good, uh, that's a good question, Rachel. And um, I know that the county clerk's office is um, apparently processing the marriage applications and marriage, is that what it's called, the marriage applications? It's so. been a long time for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the um, county clerk's office is doing that now, but that's a really interesting concept. And I think when the, uh, when the stay at home order lifts, uh, you know, that would be a good thing to explore uh, because, you know, again, we have the beaches and beach is always a really lovely place to get married and right. great pictures. So, uh, well, and I think know, it, it's a time, obviously it's very emotionally charged, but I think it can feel really lonely for a lot of couples that had their hearts set on something. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I think from a tourism aspect and we can promote opportunities that still exist that, you know, might be really helpful for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Thanks, Bob. Yep. All right. And with that, I'd like to thank Bob Lukens from Visit Muskegon for joining us this morning for our virtual roundtable. Um, we have a lot of information on muskegon.org. Um, we're updating it um, every day with new information that comes out. Um, we have two upcoming virtual roundtables next week. Um, one of them is with restaurant industry owners and the other is with retail industry owners. Um, so you can find information on that at muskegon.org. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us um, at the chamber and we will um, answer those questions. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this morning and I hope you have a wonderful morning. Thanks, Justin. And I miss you all. Take care. <laughs>